Beats, beats by Trill, straight killerville, dog, 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 dog. <laughs> Good. We are back. Another live from Vietnam Friday, hometown of the one and only J. Cole, the only musician that anybody is talking about today. And we're going to have to move this banner because Trill Noise is not showing up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm like this. You up a little too, too high. Mm-hmm. So we ain't going to be able to run that banner, but that's all cool. But um, how y'all doing tonight? We're doing good, man. All right. Doing that's great. What's up. That's what's up. Um, Mr. J, how you doing? Good, man. Just keep the things moving as usual. Okay, I thought Mr. Jones w- um was gonna join us, but apparently he's not. So I guess we're gonna go to have to go through all these twenty five picks ourselves. That mm. means um more picks for all of us. Got Whoever, some picks. Uh, so before we get into it, though, I don't, I, let's not get into that just yet. Mm. Let's get into this J Cole thing. Um, I went to bed last night, woke up, <laughs> wiped out the eye boogers, and was like, J. Cole dissed Kendrick Lamar. Then I go and I go listen to it. I'm like, okay. You know, light work. Like, it's PWC. You know, my <laughs> homie called me, my, my homie, uh, John Dozier, shouts out to Mr. Myrtle Beach, calls me. He's like, yo, man, you got to check out the song. You'll listen to the first line. You're going to love it. And then... I start to go back to Facebook and I see he dropped a whole album. A whole album. Not just a disc record, but a whole album, like overnight. Like some people were still awake when he dropped it, but I went to some a lot of us old folks went to bed and woke up and the album was there. What y'all got to say about this? Me? Okay, you know what I'm saying? You gave me the call this morning. I was at work and you said, uh, hey, we gotta talk about this J. Cole situation. You said he dropped a diss track and a whole album. I was like, damn. You know what I mean? Like you said, I mean, it was overnight. We was all asleep. So, you know, when I got off, I mean, I got off kind of late, so I didn't get back to the crib till about, about 5 o'clock. So I done listened to it two times. And then, you know, I went to uh, I went to academics page, you know, like to hear what he had to say about it and stuff like that. But um, all I got to say is all the Fayville hate on J. Cole needs to stop today anybody in favor that hates on j cole i'm gonna block you you know what i'm saying I'm, I'm, I'm gonna dismiss you or whatever like come on dog i mean he did a diss song to kendrick lamar and still shouted out favor i mean what, what more do you want from a i mean how can i say this to me like my only uh thing has been that at least we have a hot rapper representing our city I mean, we we could have had a. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say no names, but but you know what I'm talking about. Like, I mean, we we could have had the wackest rap on earth representing Fayville and thinking everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like having the whole world thinking that this is what Fayville is about. I mean, we have J Cole from Fayville that says two six. That says, I mean, he mentioned PWC in the damn rhyme. Come on, dog. I ain't never thought of uh, <laughs> yeah, PWC got- in the rhyme. I mean, he used PWC in the rhyme. I mean, he shouted out Fayville. He even said Cumberland. He said Cumberland in the rap. Come on, dog. I mean, I mean, the shit was yeah, dope. What's I not mean, to be proud of? Exactly. I mean, you ain't got to like him personally. I don't know him personally. I don't know him at all. You know what I mean? But my thing is, like, we, we, we have one of the top MCs in the world Representing Fayville and niggas be still hating. And then on top of that, I mean, I mean, I, I saw a post on Facebook where the girl said, uh, some girl, she said, uh, he said PWC, he should have said the Merc. 
Bitch, please, man, kill yourself. What? Man, come on, dog. <laughs> the Merc ain't the only place in Fayetteville. I mean, he, he nah, keeping it. I, I, mean, love, I love the PWC reference. That was the first man. thing my homeboy said. Yo, listen to the first line, man. And once I heard that, that I was like, oh, shit. Man, yeah, that PWC reference, man, was, I mean, that's the one that sticks in my head the most, the PWC reference. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. come on, dog. Like, I mean, you know, Fayetteville, I mean, y'all always talk about people supporting, you know what I'm saying, but you don't want to support nobody from Fayetteville. And if you can't support J. Cole, then psh, please. I mean, he he did a diss track. I mean, if anything, he put all of us in this goddamn shit. You know what I mean? So everybody need to follow suit. I mean, that's just my feelings on it, but the shit is dope. I only listened to it twice. I ain't had enough time to digest it and, you know, analyze it and listen to every, you know, say every bar. But, you know, like I said, the PWC thing stuck out. I heard him say Cumberland. And plus he said 2-6. You know what I mean? Come on. I mean, what more do you want? Mr. J, what do you got, man? Yo, I mean, it's a dope track. Uh, I haven't really had the chance to listen to the whole album. I've been kind of skimming through since I saw some of the stuff. Like I said, just chill with the the, 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 the Fable Hate period. I, I've said this twice. I've put it up on, uh, on uh, several people's uh, comments. You know, this is why we can't have nice things. You, you out here? Exactly. You know, Hating on other artists, any kind of hate is, is just a waste of time. You know, say for him, for Moray, it's just a waste of time. I mean, the verse he had, what he's talking about, you know, he used the New Jack City reference. You know, what I'm saying he's G, you know, basically saying, you know, oh, dude, G money. Um, man, I, I, it's just a whole bunch of stuff in that song, and you know. I, I love the lyricism. The only the only critique I have for it is that first part of the beat he could have did away with. He could have just left it, you know, left that beat alone and kept the the last part where, he switched the, where it switched up. That, you talking about where it switched up? Yeah, that, that could have stayed. That could have been the whole entire joint. I, I'm kinda, Can I be honest? You know, that was my only critique. Is the beat yeah, that, the that, first beat? But I still was like, hey, he still killed it though, right? Yeah, just listening to the lyrics, man. And I mean, lyrics. you can't. I, mean, I understand people have, you know, they want to compare it to Nas and, and Jay Z. It's it's not gonna be on that level. It's just not. I, you know, what I'm saying straight up, it's just not gonna be on that level. On the level of what? Nas like, and Jay Z. He said, "He's just not gonna be on that level." I mean, uh, I mean, for, uh, for in this time, I mean, this, I think in this generation, it almost could be though. I, I mean, I don't, I don't think no. lyrical, lyrically and intensity wise, he's still, even though it's dope, it's still part of him, him and Holland kind of not really wanting to take it to him, take it to him. Um, I think, you know, you, you need you need to be able to go for the kill shot the first time out. You know what I'm saying? I understand he has a, you know, a soft spot for him. And, you know, you could still have respect for somebody. But part of that respect is, you you respect his skill so much that you're gonna go for the you gonna go for the juggler. So that's okay, before, but lyrically it, it was still dope. I'm 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 waiting to see what 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 the next thing's gonna be. I agree with you on that one, but you gotta understand, like the Jay Z and Nas beef was more personal. I mean, you had Jay Z going was, to his baby was. mama. You know what I mean? Like so, like this right here is just on some some ego type shit. This is an ego beef. I mean, this ain't no real beef. Like, you know what I mean? They don't know each other. You know what I mean? They didn't grow with each other. I mean, they weren't in the same city. You know, J. Cole is in, from Fayetteville, North Carolina. You know, Drake's from Canada. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Kendrick's from, from uh, L.A. So this right here is just on some... I mean, this right here is just as fabricated as the East Coast, West Coast beef back in the day. It's just, it's just on... Like, like this right here is, is an ego beef. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, so, so I mean, like you know, the Nas and so Jay Z. It's not really beef. a beef. It's not really a beef. It's I just, mean, it like ain't a beef. Said. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it's a MC. Wow. It's a hip hop thing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which makes it great. It's a hip hop thing. I mean, I, I like to see this. You know what I mean? This is a hip hop thing. Ain't nobody gonna die. No. no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you know, none of that type shit. You know, the East Coast West Coast beef. Uh, beef. You know, had people died. 
you know, but uh, the Nas and Jay-Z beef, you know what I'm saying, that, that was personal. But this right here is an ego beef. So, you know, I mean, I like it. I mean, long, as long as they keep it with, with the lyrics and stuff like that, I mean, I love it. I mean... It's more akin I, to... Um, it's more akin to uh, LL and... and, uh, and Cannabis. Uh, and cannabis in that, in, that, in that way. I mean, you know, but <laughs> J. Cole did, did know more about him and did kind of see him earlier on in his career. He actually did want to sign... Kendrick until he found out he was already kind of in a deal or in a situation with um with Top Dog. So but yeah, that that kind of Yeah, but um all right, well, but we're going to move it on. We don't want to stay on too too long on this topic because we're supposed to be doing the top 25 Boom Bap producer draft. And there's just three of us now doing it and we got 25 picks to knock out, but um one thing I will say on this note the difference between LL and Cannabis is both of these cats kind of got the same amount of fans. They're like evenly matched on fan base. Whoa. Whoa. Who? Kendrick and Cole. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I thought you talking about Their, their fan base is almost... No, I was saying... <laughs> I thought you said LL and Cannabis had the same... Oh, no, right. they didn't have no evenly matched, matched fan base. That's the thing. Um, what did LL say? 99% of your fans wear high heels. He had 99% more fans than Cannabis. I'm sorry. But, well, I mean... He didn't have okay. <laughs> now go ahead. He didn't have the same machine. Like he was just coming out on Universal. He didn't okay, but you know, same. but I I will yeah. say this though, the greatest the greatest battle song of all times is "Can I Bus" by LL. I don't care what nobody says. It was five minutes of straight rapping and just going in on the motherfucker. And he Whoa. he he came in Mike Tyson. So I mean, as far as like uh, uh, beef songs. Can I bust is the best one to me. Well, I don't got time to debate with you that, with that all night. So we're gonna get into this. Uh, it's not one. Producer draft. Let's break down. <laughs> let's break down the rules. So, Thriller Noise, you're gonna have the first pick in the draft. Oh, Mr. J, you're gonna have the second. I'm gonna have the third, and so on, and so on, and so on. Um, we're gonna have like a stipulation. There's a stipulation now. You can select the Beat Nuts as a pick. Or like Come the on. beat miners. No, yeah, yeah. Because you wouldn't say Juju by himself, or you wouldn't say. I mean, so Les, would you? I mean, that's that's like the Neptunes. You wouldn't say Pharrell by. Okay, well then, then we won't do it like that. We'll just do all solo, all solo producers. I mean, so so can't nobody pick the beat nuts. Not if you're not gonna let us do it like that. Because right. oh. nobody's gonna pick. I'm sorry, Juju or Psycho Les aren't gonna probably make the top 25 if you're going off of the individual names. I mean, let me let me take the beat nuts off then. Nobody can say the beat nuts. All right, scratch you, it out. Are we are we gonna allow us to pick a production crew as as a pick? I mean, are we cool well, with that? Are we cool with that? If that's the case, if we pick uh, pick a production crew, because one of my production crews. All right, I we're going to keep it I, simple. Then. We're going to keep I, it simple. You make it a complex. We're going to keep it simple, man. We're going to stay on the solos. We're going right. to stay on the solos. We're not going right. to be out of, You can't pick the beat nuts. You can't pick the beat miners. You can't pick uh, Solid Scheme. None of that. Uh, all right. Let's go. Start right, with me. So, yeah, let me – hold on. Let's get, some, let's get some music going, but we're going to turn it down kind of low. Get some music going. Let's get a. Uh, we're gonna turn it down a little low here. All right. The only so, reason why this right here is my first pick. Yeah. Pick. The only re the only reason why this is my first pick because I don't want one of y'all to pick them later. But I'm going with Primo. I mean, wasn't that a pick. given though? Like why? Uh, but but give us a little context too. Give us a little context too. Okay, the reason why I'm going with Primo is because Primo, his samples, like uh, you, you remember that one album when he had a little interlude? He was talking about like you know he was beefing with the these breakbeat uh, dudes. You know what I'm saying? Like putting out the putting out the information like the songs that he sampled from. Man, the people that he sampled from didn't even know that he sampled their music until them them breakbeat cats. Started putting out the music, you know what I'm saying? Like putting out the, like the uh, primo sample this and primo sample that. 
Yeah. I mean, pre- I mean, me as a producer, Primo has songs that I have went on sites and seen that uh, like uh, I go to uh, all sample, allsample.com and they'll, they'll break down every song and every sample used in the song. And Primo has samples that you can't recreate. You know what I mean? Like his skill on sampling is top tier and nobody can nobody can fuck with it. I mean, it's that's just a fact. He's the okay. most cre- he, he's the most creative and everything on sampling. Out of anybody in the history of sampling, nobody has been more creative than uh, Primo. So that's my first one. I mean, isn't that the standard though? Wasn't that going to be a given that Premiere was going to be number one more likely? Nah, nah, nah. Like I said, the only reason why I did that, you know what I'm saying, so nobody couldn't take that from me, but he is not the number one though. He's not the number one. You just didn't want you just didn't want us to pick him, so you picked him. Exactly, man. Ain't, ain't this a <laughs> this, this a draft? You know what I'm yeah. Right, ain't, that, right. ain't that what football teams and basketball teams do? Yeah. Yeah. That's fucked up. All right, um, number two pick in the top 25 boom bap draft goes to Mr. J. You got 30 seconds to select your pick. I can't hear you too well. We might have to turn the music down on you. We're gonna go with that clap producer, um, out of a collective. I'm going with Showbiz. Showbiz. You're going with Showbiz as the number two pick? Yep. Showbiz. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's all I... <laughs> Me and Trill is over here, hum, hummings. I mean, f- from DITC, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I know, yeah. I'm, I'm just <laughs> letting the rest of the world know from DITC. Yeah. T- turn the music back up, but yeah. And why? Uh, right. Well, this is the thing. If we can't hear Mr. If we can't hear Mr. J, we ain't gonna be able to play this music. Yeah. 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 Can Can you turn your mic up, some Mr. J? He's got a what? Just got a sleeper pick. You know what I mean? A who? Sleeper pick. What do you say? Oh, that's a sleeper pick. All right, well, let me tag Premier into the thing. Um, so number three pick is on me then, huh? Yeah. Wow. Hey, damn. Number three pick in the top 25 boom bap hip hop trap. I got to go with a producer draft. I got to go with my man Havoc. I got to go with Havoc. Um, he's probably got the what's considered number one hip hop beat of all time. He does. Um, Infamous Mob. Uh, the Infamous album was amazing. Hell and Earth sound was amazing. He didn't produce for a lot of cats outside of Mob Deep, but it's just everything he produced for Mob Deep was amazing. The sounds always fit. Um, and and I can't imagine a cat that has the number one beat of all time not being in at least the top five. I mean. I feel you on that one, but you know, Havoc ain't even on my list. You know what I mean? I mean, he's not even on your list. Nah, Havoc ain't on my list. You know what I mean? Because you know what I mean. He he peaked on the Hell on Earth. Hell on Earth was was Havoc. He He peaked peaked on on Hell on Earth. Yeah, he peaked on Hell on Earth, dog. Have you heard Juvenile Hell? Man, I've heard all of it, man. It was Juvenile Hell wasn't really that great, and I don't know if Havoc did a lot of yeah. Production, I mean, no, but... no, no. He he didn't do none of it. Yeah, that, that was all uh, uh, Lars Professor. And um, if I'm not mistaken, you know, I mean, I don't want to be, you know, saying quoting false shit, but you know, it was mostly Lars Professor, I think. But anyway, but to me, I mean, to me, he has the the number one hip hop beat of all time, which is Shook One's Part Two. I mean, ain't no question about that. But Hell on Earth. You know what I'm saying? Hell on Earth, that's when he came into his own. He peaked on Hell on Earth, if you ask me. Okay. All right, well, let's get on to the number fourth pick in the top 25 Boom Bap Producer Draft. 
and that will be me. That would be Marley Mall. Marley Mall. Which, you know what I'm saying, like I said, the only reason why I picked uh, Primo as the first one, you know what I'm saying, to keep anybody else from picking them, but Marley Mall is the innovator of sampling in the way that we use it today. I mean, he's the first one to sample actual drum sounds instead of using like, you know what I'm saying, like the, the drum machines and the 808s and the, the, the Roger Lynn drums and, and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Marley Mall is the first person to actually chop up samples and use sample drum you know what I'm saying? Sample drum sounds and stuff like that. And plus, you know what I mean? Come on. I mean, Molly Maul, you got Biz Marquee, you got the early Rock Kim, you got Big Daddy Kane, you got, I mean, come on, MC Shan, you got Craig G. I mean, you got the song The Symphony. I mean, you got a uh, LL Cool J, uh, Mama Said Knock You Out album. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, Molly Maul is the innovator of sampling. So, Molly Maul is actually number one. You know what I mean? But like I said, I, I picked him second. Just to keep anybody from picking Premier from me, you know what I mean? Because you know Premier is like the god to me, you know. But Marley Mall, as far as his innovation and and the way he used the sampler and stuff like that, nobody wasn't using it like that. So Marley Mall is my pick. Huh. Okay. I mean, come on, man. Uh, picking boogers. I mean, all, all that stuff, man. I mean, <laughs> Roxanne Shante. You know what I'm saying? Biz Marquee. I mean, the list goes on and on, man. I mean, I mean. Countless, countless classics, countless classics. I mean, it's a difference between having a hobby. You know what I mean? He got countless classics. Like, I mean, come on, dog. Yeah. So, Molly Mall, that's my number two pick. That's number four, actually. But that's your number two. Your I mean, number yeah, two, yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 it's, it's, yeah. It's my number two pick. Yeah. All right, well, let's get into, what is this, the fifth pick of the top 25 Boom Bap producer draft, and that goes to Mr. J. Who you got for me? Um, we're going with Pete Rock. We talked about classic. Pete Rock. Uh, classic, you know, songs, classic, individual beats. He has the all-time classic beat, you know, T-R-O-Y. That is the all-time classic beat, bar none. Probably the most classic album, Mecca and the Soul Brother. Um, it's hard to talk what he's done. Uh, you know, joints like True Master. Uh, he just did a collaboration with Common. So, I mean, he continues to put out classic material and influential material. I mean, yeah, I just heard about that uh, that comment, and um, yeah, I ain't heard it yet though. But yeah, I need to check that one out. But yeah, yeah, that I mean, that is um, I heard that's about to drop uh real soon, right? Who is it? Common who? who? P Rock, you said? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And P Rock also did yeah. the one with um Smith and Wesson. That was really dope. Yeah, I mean, you know, but his uh, I mean, I, I think as far as him, I think his greatest production was on um. Uh, not the first one. What was the second one? The, I mean, the, the second him and the CL Smooth one. What was the name of that? Damn it! What's the name of we that? We gotta one? look it up because we can't. We can't be. We gotta know this. Yeah, exactly. But you know, <laughs> let me I look mean, it up. I album. mean, he's he, he's on my list, but you know, like what I'm the first like, one was he, the main ingredient. On the Mecca and the Soul Brother, ain't the main ingredient or something like that? No, 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 no. That's the one I like. Yeah, the main ingredient. Yeah, the main ingredient is the, is the like. second one. Yeah. No, no, it's not the second one. Yeah, it is. I, I, Mecca and no. the Soul Brother is the first. I'm looking at it right now, dude. I'm looking at Google right now. Nineteen ninety two. Okay. Mecca and the Soul I, Brother, nineteen ninety four. Main ingredient. Okay. Well, what's yeah. the one after that? All sold out. No, that was that. the EP. That was the EP. Uh, yeah, that was that rare was track. EP. They had dropped rare tracks. And oh, so good. okay, well, yeah, ma ma main ingredient is the one I'm talking about. Then, yeah, that, that one right there is my favorite one. That one right there is my favorite one, though. I mean, he really showed his ass on production in that one. You know what I mean? I mean, shout out to Pete Rock, though. You know, cause he he be rapping on the songs. He he be harmonizing in the background. I mean, way before Timberland was doing all this type of shit. I mean, Pete Rock was the remix king. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, he was the. I mean, you had to go to Pete Rock for a remix back in the '90s. Like, I mean, he was the remix king. So. Yeah, and he wrote his own rap. 
Nobody wrote yep. them. Yep. I mean, they want the best, but he wrote them. <laughs> yeah, he was rapping on the Soul Survivor. What, he did Soul Survivor 1 and 2, didn't he? <laughs> Yep, so yeah, so one and two. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, Pete Rock is solid. Wrapped right on down with the king. Monday yep, down with the king. Hey, hey, look, look. And he made sure any remix he did, he rapped on it. You know that, right? Yeah. Any remix he did, he rapped on it, though. I mean, you got to give him props for that, though. Yeah. So what I got, it's my pick now? Yep. Damn, it's hard to keep up with all this stuff. I got to moderate comments. I got to... Uh, this is the most stuff I had to do. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get my pick out the way so I can moderate this stuff right. I'm going to go with, for the number, what, this is a six pick? Six pick in the top 25, boom bap, producer draft. I'm going to go with Alchemist. Mm. I'm mm. going with Alchemist. Because he white? Going on strong, <laughs> heavy. Um, <laughs> came under the Soul Assassins, DJ Muggs. First heard him on Far Eye. I know um, when him and uh, Prodigy did the uh, HNIC, I mean, they was killing it. You know, a lot of a lot of classic bangers. Uh, worst to worst with Dilated Peoples. Um, just so many bangers, man. Worked with so many cats. Still going strong. Worked with Freddie Gibbs. Um, what's my man that does the cooking show? Um, Action Bronson. Oh, I mean, yeah, the list yeah, goes yeah, on. Yeah. The list goes on, like, of who the Alchemist is produced for. And he got that sound that we don't like too much that we talked about. The uh, no, no drums, the no drums, Nick, man, dog, <laughs> bro. I mean, I really, I really hate that. Like, I mean, no drums, just a sample going and stuff like that. I mean, I really hate that. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a market for it because he wouldn't do it, but I do not like that. I mean, drums is hip hop. I mean, it got to have some drums behind it. Like, you know, I mean, but at the same time, you got to understand, I mean, did, did this the same dude that took a risk and put a clap sound in a, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he caught flag for putting a clap sound in a, what's that one JD Kid song? Uh, which one was that? That, that we gonna make it, that we gonna oh, make yeah, it. Oh, yeah, I forgot he did that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, he caught a lot of flack from, like, like, all the other producers because he used a clap instead of a, some type of snare or whatever. So, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not knocking it. You know what I mean? So it, it just ain't my taste. That song like, was dope. That song was dope. I sure as hell ain't knocking it. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even think about it. I mean, I remember first hearing that song and when it was out, like I never I never thought that it was just a clap because you know we, we were so conditioned by then to hear a 808 clap or a clap anyway. So we didn't even think of nothing about it. And then on top of that, when I first heard it, I didn't even know he made it. So but you know, the beat is dope, but you know, he did catch a lot of flack. I mean, you can you can find interviews on YouTube and stuff like that about him talking about that. Like he caught a lot of flack from other producers and stuff like that. A lot of East Coast heads, you know what I mean? Because he used a clap instead of a some type of you know some type of snare or whatever. But you know, yeah. But Alchemist, you know what I mean? I love his work. You know what I mean? He he's a true hip hop head. You know, but you know he wasn't. He, he's not on my list though. That first Infantry uh, album. That was pretty dope. Yeah, that shit was dope too. All right, so what we got? Number seven pick, and that goes to Trilla Noise. Whew. Let me see. I'm about to fuck y'all up. <laughs> okay, well, you said no cruise, right? Yeah. All right, okay. First of all, let me give you a little background. I'm building my list on if. If I was just a rapper and I wanted to put my, my team of producers together, so this is what my list is going off of. So I'm going to have to go with Easy Mo B. Hmm. Easy Mo B. Come okay. on. Bro. For one. We were, talking about, we were talking about him earlier today. Yeah. Easy Mo B. And you know what I mean? My favorite. My favorite track produced by him is uh, Temptations by Tupac. I mean, that is on rotation daily. I mean, that's on my drive to work playlist. I mean, I have a drive to work playlist, so <laughs> Temptations is on that. I'm just saying, though, but, you know, Easy Mo B, I mean, not only Tupac, the Biggie albums. You know I mean? Uh, the, uh, the Lost Boys. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, like, he is pretty much uh, underrated and overlooked. 
You know what I mean? He's very overlooked, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to the hip, like his his contributions to hip hop. So, I mean, I'm going with Easy Mo B. And you know what I mean? I'm I'm throwing him in right now, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to save some, some heavy hitters for later that I know y'all not going to bring up. But yeah, I'm going with Easy Mo B, man. You know what I mean? I mean, real dope. And, and his sound, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I don't know if y'all follow him on Instagram. You know what I mean? He still has an old floppy. He's on the SB1200. And he's playing them back on Instagram, man. Go back and watch that for real. So All right, that's my pick. Before we get to the next pick, we got to get to a quick uh, dizzle break, and we'll be right back. Tropical trick. Me and my team will never be link up. They're gonna be drink up. We sit down and relax and have few glasses when there's things to think about. Like I'm nice with the boss when I tend to the boss and I'm not talking drink ups. So tell the bartender that's tend to the bottle, please pass me a big cup of And tell the waitress that's waiting on us to put a little ice in it. Now watch the ice become weightless like the spaceships that I be sitting in. No waiting, listen, no they're waiting for that tropical quiz. That'll take a taste of Now tell you so. Yo, I insist it's the Dizzle. Really mean it. You could dizzle too. Dizzle is a premium luxury liqueur mixed with gavi tequila, cognac, and orange liquor mango mix. Throw your dizzle on ice, and it's nice. If you want to order your very own bottle, go to dizzlebrand.com. Let's go ahead and hit y'all with the banner real quick so y'all know where to go. Dizzlebrand.com. Be on the lookout for the new canned drinks. And just so you know, this top 25 boom bap producer draft is brought to you by Dizzle Brand. Shouts out to my guy, Chris Roker, Livio Harris, and of course, Mike Dizzle. Because he created Dizzle. Dizzle. As you see, we Dizzle all day, every day over here. All right, so where we at? We at the eighth pick? It's on me. Nah, it's on Mr. J, right? You oh, just yeah, went yeah, with yeah. ECMOB. Yeah. And hold up. Before we go, shouts out to Doc Mayhem. Mayhem the Ghost. Appreciate you tuning in. Um, what the eighth pick? Let's get to this eighth pick. Uh, who you got, Mr. J, for the eighth pick of the top 25 boom bat producer draft? I'm gonna try to save this one, it's going between a couple of different people, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and go with Jay Dilla. Jay Dilla, mm. okay. I, I figured he'd make the top 10. You got some more context for us? You know, he just uh, they just celebrated, I think, some donuts um, at a couple of the joints, and they just had a three-one-three day in Detroit, where Royce Five Nine did something over one of his uh, beats that he kind of had in the stash. So, you know, he still has an effect on hip hop in general. Definitely a lot of different MCs he's worked with. You know, um, I do have one of his albums, the EMC Squares joint, which is tight. Um, and of course, he's done some joints with Buster. I mean, what else you got for me? I mean, can I, can I say something? Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, you can say something. I mean, I might get shot for this, but, you know, I personally think that they put Jay Dilla a little too high. Oh, man, you, you're you going to get us all shot, man. You're going to get us I'm all shot. I'm just saying, man. hey, hey, hey. Guilty by association, right? Hey, it's like this, man. To me, I mean, now, he got some hot tracks. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I mean, like the far side jumps and stuff like that, but, you know, they put a little too much sauce to me, just personally. Stakes is I high. Think, Stakes is I, high. Oh, that, that, that's my joint, but I'm just saying, though. You know what I mean? Come on. If that's the case, then you got to give it to Q-Tip. You know what I mean? I mean, who you think what the mentor was? Who you think have his mentor was? Who taught Heavy how to make Large beats, professor. Man? Large professor. Nah, man. Q-Tip, man. The first it's, man, I thought it was. It's, they said large professor on the man. That's what everybody always said is large professor. Okay, but uh, 
the first uh, wanna, I mean wanna, no 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 the, the first Mom Deep album wouldn't have been nothing without Q Tip. That was all Q Tip, other than the ones that Havoc did. Yeah, but I've always heard that Large Professor taught Havoc how to make beats. No, Havoc learned how to make beats because he was around Large Professor and Q Tip. I mean, come on, dog. I mean, who wouldn't want to be around those as your teachers? But my thing is with uh, Jay Diller. I, I mean, think you're dismissing Large Professor a little too much as as have. As far as the influence over Havoc, make it be nah, you know what I mean? Because Lars Professor is my next I think pick. It was, yeah, well, <laughs> you ain't got it. Do you got nah. the next pick? Yeah, yeah, I got you know what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, Lars Professor is my man. You know what I mean? Trust Actually, me. I got the next pick. Yeah, but I'm just saying, but Lars, Lars Professor is on my list. But what I'm saying is, I personally think that the. Uh, I mean, I don't know because he died or whatever. You know, you know how niggas like try to boost a nigga up because he did and shit. But you know, to me. I don't think that he had that much of an impact on production as they say he did. Because, you know what I'm saying? I would I disagree guess. with you on that. I, let me throw this I, out there. I wasn't the I, biggest I get, Jay Dilla follower or fan, but I would disagree with that on the outside looking in. I would give it to Q-Tip as far as innovation, you know what I'm saying, is more, more than Jay Dilla. I, I would give it to Q-Tip as far as innovation and sampling and sampling and beat making. Man, and, and and the crispness of the sounds and stuff like that, man. Ain't nobody fucking with Q-Tip on that part. You know what I mean? But you know, I mean, but I, I mean, I, I give it to Jay. I mean, he he's nowhere near on my list though. But all yeah, right, well, let me get it to uh, the ninth pick, which is me. And this guy, I'm not selecting this guy just because it's his birthday today. Just so y'all know that. Okay, let me scratch him out then. All right, Diamond Who D. Who is it? Diamond <laughs> D. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, best producer on the mic. Yeah, stunts, blunts, and hip hop. I mean, classic album. There's not one joint you're gonna skip through. If you love real hip hop and you skip through stunts, blunts, and hip hop, you don't love real hip hop. Um, if you don't know it, if you don't know done it. From DIT, yeah, if you don't know it, you don't know real yeah. hip hop. All the know production it. through DITC, Fat Joe, Showbiz AG, Lord Finesse, whoever. How about he produced on the score, the yep. Fugees? Mm-hmm. That shit was yep. dope. Has one of the Probably the biggest remixes ever with Roz Kaz, Soul on Ice. Mm. Still going strong with the dime piece. I think he might have three dime pieces right now. You know. He might have three right now, dude. I mean, that right there is a great pick. I mean, you, you, t- you took one, you took one of mine. You know what I mean? I, I was I was gonna say that one as a and, and as a sleeper. Diamond, if you, I just tagged you. I just tagged you. If you tune in, if you see the tag, we've been wanting you on this podcast forever because we love you, man. Happy birthday to you. Your um, what is that? My third pick, right? You're 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 my third pick. You're gonna be on my top five for the top twenty five boom bat producer draft. I don't think I gotta say more, man. Diamond fucking D, man. Best producer yeah. on the mic. All right, let's get into the number 10 pick who goes to Trillinoise Tracks. Let me see. What you got for me? Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin. Oh, you know what's crazy? <laughs> oh, man, I fucked up, man. Fuck, I feel I got to... Somebody needs to shoot me. I mean... Rick, Rick Rubin, Rubin ain't on my list. I mean, look, dog. I mean, as far as like... As far as like uh, the innovation of hip hop, you know, what I'm saying Rick Rubin was around when hip hop transitioned from the uh, like the Fantastic Five, you know, all, all that uh, you know, like niggas in costumes and shit. You know what I mean? So Rick Rubin, he he transitioned hip hop to the Run DMC, the Beastie Boys. You know what I mean? That era. And to yeah, me, yeah. and to me, that's the first boom bap beats. LL Cool J, you know what I mean, Rock the Bells, all that type. I mean, come on, that's the first boom bap beats. So Rick Rubin should be, I mean, if, if we're talking about the, the uh, boom bap producers, he should be number one because Rick Rubin invented the boom bap with the hard-hitting drums, just a, a hard-hitting drum and, and a scratch or just a, like a, a guitar, like riff stab or stuff like that. So Rick Rubin, is my pick, you know what I mean? Come on, dog. I mean, just think about it. And then, and then what, what damn near 30 years later, <laughs> and did uh <laughs> 99 problems, but but a bitch ain't one. Come on, man. 
I mean, he made a number one hit way after he he started Boom Bap. I mean, after he started the transition from, you know, the Furious Five, Grandmaster Flash, all them costumes and stuff like that. You know, Run DMC changed the game when they were just wearing like you know. I mean, I mean, I don't remember niggas and wearing can I leather, throw this out you know saying, leather jackets and fedoras, but still though, like they changed the whole style and the sound. So, you know, Rick Rubin, you know what I mean? That's my pick right there. Let me throw this out there too, because you know this is something that gets under my skin. The guess the hip hop thing. But that's the two words I always use, like when somebody says guess the hip hop, Rick Rubin. I mean, he ain't no guest to hip hop. I mean, but just I saying, mean, like you know, if anything, white people I mean, in general are guest to hip hop. You man, because for one, Rick man, Rubin really kind of like shuts that down for me. I mean, hip hop was de- derived from poverty and stuff like that. So, I mean, all white people want rich. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come on. I mean, I lived in the projects. I mean, I had white people, Puerto Ricans, black. You know what I mean? Whatever. I mean, hip hop. Hip hop shouldn't have no no color or no uh, stigmatism behind, like you know what color you are. Because I mean, if you think about it, it wouldn't be no hip hop if it wasn't for white people. <laughs> Niggas don't buy albums. <laughs> Come on now, white people buy albums. White people buy albums, and that that's a fact. I mean, no matter what anybody want to say or what they want to think, you know, white people buy albums. You know what I'm saying? We we always on trying to find a bootleg or some shit like that. That ain't benefiting the artist, but you know, like Rick Rubin. I mean, come on. I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. front though. I buy bootlegs too. I buy albums and bootlegs. I mean, yeah. I mean, hey, hey, if I can get it for I a bootleg price, I, I'm gonna buy it too. I mean, that's anybody, but but white people <laughs> buy albums. So like anybody that talk about that uh that cultural appropriation and all that bullshit, man, I ain't trying to hear that shit. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I ain't trying to hear none of that. I mean, because the Beastie Boys, I mean, they they were Jewish. <laughs> come on now, but still though. I mean, the Beastie Boys, you know what I'm saying? Beastie Boys. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I mean, man, look at him, man. Adam Horowitz or whatever. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. But I'm just saying, though, like, yeah, but, you know, I mean, the Beastie Boys, I mean, that's a classic album in hip hop. One of the greatest albums in hip hop. You know what I mean? I remember I got that album for Christmas. So, I mean, come on now. Like, that that cultural appropriation or whatever they try to say, like, man, come on, stop it, man. All right, so what do we got? 11th pick. That's on Mr. J, right? We're going we're gonna to try to speed this up. We about to get an hour into this. It might be a two-hour long draft. Nah. <laughs> got to go out tonight. <laughs> so that's why I said we're going to have to speed it up. So 11th pick is who you got? I got, uh, I got Static Collector. Oh, man. Mm. Was what you got a little context for me, Mr. J? Uh, he recorded with Freeway. He's uh, done some stuff with Mac Miller. Um, you know, he's been very present on the mixtape scene. Um, of course, you know, studio album Spell My Name Right, uh, Stick to the Script, Population Control. He's done albums with Terminology and Saigon, uh, Static 3 EP with Freeway. Uh, done Trill Static with Bun B. So he's been able to kind of run the gambit as far as artists and bringing them over into the type of sound and the type of production that he's created. And he worked with Rex, who we had on the podcast, mm-hmm. and who and he recorded that Rex's first song with DJ Premier. Yeah, Static Select. I mean, he and he's going hard right now, man. I mean, he's 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 the modern one of the modern day boom bap producers. Yeah. All right, so we're, let's get with that number twelve pick, which uh, that's me, right? Oh, twelve yep. pick. Oh man, who do I got? It's about twenty five. I ain't got no twenty five. <laughs> We might have to, yeah. That's why we needed that other person. We're going to break this into two parts. So I'm going to go with... hmm, I already got Diamond D. I already got... You know what? Hmm, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know. It shouldn't be that hard. All right, so I'm going with the RZA. Hmm. I'm going with the. I'm picking the RZA. 
I gotta pick the yeah, that's who I'm going with. And what pick is that? I don't know. Nine. That's 10, the 12th pick. That's the 12, 12, pick. 12, 12, yeah. 12 pick. I'm going with the RZA. Yeah, we might. Yeah. I mean, why? Man, why not, man? Expand. Uh, we lost Mr. J. Produced the biggest um group ever in hip hop, probably, I would say. Most people argue that the biggest group ever. You know, yeah. um yeah. the Jizza first album, you know, um the Liquid Swords, no. the, the Method Man first album, the Cuban Links, all those first albums, he pretty much laced most of those. I give it to you, but you know, to be honest, man, I don't double think CD I, he did pretty well. I don't think I would call that boom bap. You know what I'm saying? Boom bap done fell off by the time he came in. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but you know, I don't I'm consider wrong. the RZA boom bap hip hop. You know what I mean like Dude, you know, they got they some I, people just, consider hold up, let me show you this list they got on the internet. Some people considering little John boom bap. I mean, and those motherfuckers don't know what the fuck they're talking about. We're not talking about them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They don't matter. If you consider they got, Little they John. Got Lex Luger, they got Lex Luger on the list. If Mike, you consider Little John or Lex Luger boom bap, you know what I mean? You should not be, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, you 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 should be a, a part of this conversation. Now, Lex Luger, I mean, that's a whole nother damn conversation, man. Lex Luger is that nigga. I mean, I like that shit. I mean, you know what I'm saying? For real. But if you consider Lex Luger or Little John, Boom bap, you have no idea what hip hop music is. That 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 means you know what I'm saying you must have been born in '99. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you had to have been born in '99 to even consider Little John or Lex Luger, which are dope producers. Boom bap hip hop. You know what I mean? Some I mean, to me, that's what's crazy. But I mean, well, I mean, those some people are wrong. Let's get to, I that, mean, let's get to that 13th <laughs> pick though, because we still got 12 more to go. And that's on you, 13th pick. Who you got for me? Eric Sermon, all day. So, Eric Sermon. Yeah. Eric Sermon. Eric any Sermon. Con- any any context? It's just Eric Sermon. All, all the EPMD albums, the Red Man albums, K Solo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come on. The list goes Man, on and on. I mean, me K Solo. Uh, I mean, his own solo stuff. I mean, man, the, the list goes on and on. I mean, the early 50 Cent stuff. I mean, look, I can see you some links, man, for real. He was working with 50, uh, 50 Cent before he blew up. You know what I mean? I can see you some songs on that. I mean, and then on top of that, like, I mean, what, Keith Murray? Who else? I mean, the, li- the list goes on and say, on. Yeah, Red Man, all them. Did you say all that? Red yeah, man? yeah, yeah, Red Man, yeah. Of course I had to say Red Man, yeah. Red Man, EPMD, K-Solo. I mean, he has a, a list of classics under his belt, too. You know what I mean? And, I mean, we brought this up before, though. You know what I mean? Like, he is very oh. underrated and, like, not brought up a lot. Yeah, true. You know what I mean? And I, I think that's because whenever you rap and produce, people want to pick and choose on which one they want to uh, big you up on. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and that be the problem with like rapper producers. So, you know what I'm saying? Like they want to big you up on one or the other. So, you know, like Eric Sermon to me, they don't recognize, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know I mean? His production skills and stuff like that because he was rapping in a group, but they didn't know, you know, he was doing all the beats. You know what I mean? He did give, uh, you know, PMD, you know what I mean? I guess that was some little nice thing. He gave him just a production credit too. Like, you know, you my man, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I give you production credit too. I mean, but we all know, you know, what I mean that Eric Sermon is the man behind the beats. You know, what I mean, and I mean, I actually uh, he used a Roland W thirty. I actually went to uh, Jim's pawn shop and bought a, a Roland W thirty way back in the day, just because I knew that uh, Eric Sermon used it. Yep, but um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna give it to Eric Sermon, man. I mean, his, his credits go a whole long way, though. I mean, I mean. It, it'd take us a whole hour for me to goddamn just go through all his songs, you know what I'm saying, his production credits and stuff like that. I mean, but just look it up. I mean, Eric Sermon has done a whole lot. And matter of fact, he's done he's done a uh he's done a whole lot more side work than all the producers that we just named though. Why you bullshitting? 
Yeah, he has. I mean, his side work, you know what I'm saying, outweighs his own work. Like, you know what I'm saying, like as his group or him as a solo artist, though. I mean, trust me. All right, yeah. let's get to the number 14th pick, I think it is. 14th pick. Who you got for me, Mr. J? I'm going with uh, Derringer. Derringer is a producer. How you spell that? How you spell that? D A R I N G E R. G E R? Okay. And of course, he's the production for Griselda. You know. Oh, okay. Definitely bringing that boom back sound back, bringing the kind of, kind of the. Uh, I guess the foundation for the lyrics that you know Griselda spit, which is you know back to more lyrical uh, content, you know more hardcore content. Uh, you know, of course he's done. You know, All right, well. Now. So he's mainly the Griselda producer and does a lot of this shit then. Yeah, for Conway. I, another, I guess you say he's a modern day boom bap producer then. I was about to ask, like, who who he produced for them? You know, I ain't never heard of him. Yeah. I've Conway, heard of him. I've yeah. heard of Derringer. <laughs> All right. Well, let's. We're about to get to this number 15th pick because we about to got to run one more Dizzle break because we promised a di- two Dizzle breaks tonight. Damn, this is going to be tough. I'm going to try to make this one quick. Ah, oh, fuck. Uh, I'm going to go with high tech. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go with high tech. Yeah. I, um, Started on that Mood Doom album. Um, I mean, you got the Talib Kweli, Most Def. You know, um, really good sound, really good sound in hip hop. One of the few cat produce the only producer I think that made it out of uh Cincinnati, yeah, yeah, you know. So, yeah, I'm gonna go with high tech, man. And we got one time for one more pick before we get to a dizzle break. 16th pick goes to Trilla Noise. Who you got for me? Q tip, Q tip, Q tip. Can we tag him? Q tip. I mean, you know, he changed the whole sound in the Christmas and 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 the hard hitting drums. Like, I mean, I mean, people people consider hip uh boom bap as like you know hard hitting. I mean, as far as me, I cause uh I think of uh boom bap as hard hitting drums and snares. But Q tip, man, Q tip changed the game. I'm trying to tell you, man. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to the crispness and the clearness of the samples and stuff like that. Nobody has done it before or after Q-Tip. I mean, like his the drums hit hard. I mean, you can put in Midnight uh, Midnight Marauders right now, dog, and you could be like, "Damn, like that was like what? Damn near twenty years ago." Yeah, and it sounds better than anything. Like, I mean, it's crisp. You know I mean like Q-Tip shit is crisp. I mean, he doesn't get a lot of props, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to hip-hop producers either. You know, it's always the primos, the P-Rocks, the well, the alchemists and stuff like that. Like, I don't know why he don't get his props as far as, like, like innovation, too. Like, I mean, I mean, he has samples nobody has used twice. Like, I mean, even Pete Rock and them was using samples that Large Professor used or, I mean, all of them. I mean, from Diamond D, I mean, all them dudes, like, Use samples that all of them was using at the same time, but nobody has used no samples that Q Tip has used. Period. So, I mean, he, he should be higher up in the list, but you know, I'm just saving my picks. You know what I mean? Like the the one up y'all. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what I mean? But oh yeah, okay. I mean, but but Q Tip's quality, uh, sample selection, and 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 and, and the way he used them, like I mean. I mean, just go back to Midnight Marauders, and that says it all. I mean, I, I put that that album as the best the best sounding album, hip hop wise, 
in the history of hip hop, Midnight Marauders. I stand on that one right there. Trust me. All right, well, we're going to get to a quick dizzle break, and we'll be back in like 49 seconds. Yeah. That's right. I really mean it. You could dizzle too. Dizzle is a premium luxury liqueur mixed with agave tequila, cognac, and orange liquor mango mix. Throw your dizzle on ice and it's nice. Want to order your very own bottle? Go to dizzlebrand.com. If you live in California, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Arkansas, go to your store and see if they carry dizzle. And coming soon to Georgia, along with the four-pack recipes, there you go. Shouts out to Chris Rogue, Olivia Harris, and Mike Dizzle. What do we got? We on the 17th pick? I guess so. All right, so we got a few more picks. We about to wrap this up. 17th pick, and who just went last? Me. I think. <laughs> I don't know. Shit. Yeah, you just pick Q-tip. Yeah. So, yeah, Mr. Yeah, yeah, Jay, Q-tip. what do you got for me for the the 17th pick I got Jake of the one. top 25 boom bat draft? Jake One. Jake One is the producer. Wow, he wasn't even on my list. And he a white boy too. Why? <laughs> <laughs> he's out of uh, Seattle, Washington. Um, he's produced for a uh, whole album for Freeway, the Stimulus Package. That's one of my my favorite jokes. I like I like to listen to from time to time. Um, you know, if you're a wrestling fan, you know he's done the theme song for uh, John Cena. The time is now. That's one of the joints I like too. Uh, I didn't know that. We did a rap album. Um, I forgot done. totally all about Jake One. He had a track on 50 Cent, uh, Give Rich or Die Trying soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know, Officer. He's dope. I mean, yeah. I, I just watched a little video from him uh, like last weekend. You know what I mean? I mean, he he's still out there. Like he uh he he did a video like recreating stuff. He's still using the ASR ten. Mm. Yeah, he still uses the ASR ten. Like yeah, yeah. Jake one is dope though. Yeah, wow, that's this a good one. Be, this is gonna be tough. So where are we at? I- <laughs> that's a good one. So what are we at? The number eighteenth pick. Mm-hmm. Oh man, who do I got? Who do I got? See, we can't pick, we can't pick uh beat nuts thanks to Trill and Noise Tracks. Thank you, Trill. Nah, you the one that said we can't pick groups. <laughs> what are you I wanted about? to let us pick groups, but you were like, you already started like, yo, I don't know, man. All right, so here we go. Um I'm going to go with I'm going with Nick Wiz. Who? Nick Wiz. Produced the um, Stella Dwellers. Produced for Milk Bone. I just really love his sound. I think Nick Wiz had a really good sound for hip hop. Um, Definitely trying to get him on a podcast as well. But yeah, Nick Wiz had it. Let me pull up his catalog too. Nick, I mean, Nick Wiz... Produced for a lot of cat show. I mean, I'm not I'm not too familiar, so I mean, I you're can't... a producer and you're not familiar with Nick Wiz. Man, there's a lot of producers. <laughs> I, mean, shit, I ain't gonna know all of them. <laughs> shit, <laughs> you know me? Oh, Trilly Noise Tracks, the producer. Uh, you should know this nigga from <laughs> West Bubble Fuck. You know what I'm saying, Virginia, or whatever. Like, nah. I mean, I'm not familiar. Maybe I've heard it. I you mean, heard him. Even, he did the he he did I mean, a lot yeah. of production for Milk I mean, Bones. Saying, he did most of the stat uh the Cellar Dwellers first album. I mean, it ain't, it ain't no diss or no, you know what I'm saying, like nothing like that. I'm just saying, like, I mean, 
I, I would have to hear it. He's one of those producers I would have to hear his shit and be like, oh, okay, I know what you're talking about. He's got a real, yeah, yeah. he got a real good sound. Yeah. So, I see. And that was what, the, uh, what was that, the 18th pick? Yep. So we got 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Five. We got a few more. What so you got for me, Trill? 18th pick. I mean, 19, 19th pick. Large Professor. Oh, man, that's who I was looking. Come on, dog. Large Professor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come on. Like, I had to go through this big list and I couldn't, like. Large Professor. I mean, a few classics under his belt. Looking at the front door. You know what I'm saying? Look, I was in high school when look, uh, looking at the front door came out. I wrote down all the words, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I knew that. I know that rap front to back right now still and then you know i mean nas i mean he, he the first person to put nas on the track live at the barbecue you know what i mean yep. then he did uh you know it ain't hard to tell on on, on nas's classic first album so i mean you know i mean and i mean just a bunch of other stuff man i mean if you really go look at uh large professor's uh discography i mean discography you look, look. shout out to rise you know what I'm saying for uh I talked to Rise the other day. He was, he was talking about me. You talk too fast. So now he got me consciously trying to talk slow. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's, got... what's Large Professor's first name? <laughs> huh? What's Large Professor's first name? Large. <laughs> His real name. <laughs> I don't know, man. Shit. I don't know Pete Rock. Ain't, Ain't it Paul? <laughs> I think it might be. I think his name is Paul, so you got to throw that part in there too. Why wow, make you feel better? Because his name nah. is Paul. <laughs> Everybody but, uh, with the name Paul is popping. No word. All right, but um, we all popping. But like I said though, you know, like man, he has a bunch of classics under his belt. I mean, you know, like you know, he, he's mostly known for like I said, you know, what I'm saying looking at the front door, live at the barbecue, you know, which put Nas on the scene for the first time. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, it ain't hard to tell. On Nas's first album, you know what I mean, which is a classic though. You know, I mean, and then I mean, he he's done stuff on. I mean, well, you know what I'm saying, uh, Mob Deep too. You know what I mean, and um, who else? I mean, but basically though, you know what I mean. He is one of the. Uh, to me, he's one of the, like, not you know what I'm saying. Like, I don't want to say underrated. Like, I don't like that term underrated. I mean, basically, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, not mentioning enough producers in hip-hop. So, you know, that's my pick, Lars No, he is. He, 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 he's definitely not mentioned enough. All right, let's yeah, get with that the, number yeah. 20 pick. Mr. J, what you got? Mr. Green. Uh, he's done production for uh, Pace One, Young Z, uh, Malik B, uh, West Side Gun. Gucci Man and Rick Ross. Um, he's also one of the producers I, I was trying to work with when we first started out back in the day. Uh, he's, he's out of New Jersey, uh, but I never got a chance to actually work with him. And you said who that was? Mr. Green. Mr. Green? Yeah. Just G-R-E-E-N? Green? Mm hmm Okay, I think I've heard of him, but I ain't. Heard, I don't know if I necessarily know his work. Never heard of him. All right, number one, tw number twenty-one pick. Man, damn, that's I'm about, mean, to, right? I'm, I'm about to write it down, Mister Green. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna check him out though. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm gonna check him out. I'll write that down, Mister Green. What you I'm got, Paul? Go with, I'm gonna go with no ID. Produced for Common. Um, produced a lot of Rockefeller stuff. You know, um, <coughs> no ID. I mean, he's like the first producer out of Chicago, right? I mean... Or one of the first biggest producers of the hip-hop. I mean... Like, real hip boom bap producer. That's I mean, for sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that, that term, that, that term, like, first... Or first well known, you know what I mean? You know, like yeah, how many other boom bap producers were out of Chicago before No ID? I'm just saying we don't know. I mean, just I'm just saying like we we got to use that term a little more tightly. 
Cause nah, because you see, you I, I know mean, you're trying to go. You're trying to go with a cat that never made it. That don't count. Okay. <laughs> Cause you didn't make it out of Chicago. If you didn't make it. I mean, but there has to there was nah, somebody we can't go else. With cat. Y'all gotta stop with that bef- these cats that y'all be like all every, I mean, like I mean, I mean, I mean before I mean never made it or n- never made it or never made it to that level. If you didn't make it to that level and we don't know you, you didn't really make it, did you? I mean, but you know, Chicago is a bad town to use for that example, though, because you know, yeah, I mean, they don't got is, too much boom bap going on right now. I mean, all we know is Kanye and Twister, Common, No ID, and nobody said Kanye yet. I mean, he, yeah, I, mean, I don't think he's gonna be on anybody listening here. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Definitely not on mine. All right, so I got twenty one. I mean, but I got yeah, no ID. yeah, yeah. No, no idea that that's a good pick. I mean, I used to love him. I mean, come on. I mean, that's a classic. I mean, he got classics under his belt. So yeah, 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 yeah. To to me, to me, that means more than anything else. If you got a classic under your belt, I mean, that that's like when we was talking to an old boy from a uh, Blase Blase. Like, I mean, a classic under your belt. I mean, as a producer, a classic. I mean. It should be as a rapper too, like a classic. Like, I mean, danger is going to be played at any party I'm going to at my age. Or or I'm I'm going to request it, or if I'm DJing it, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna play it. Like, I mean, that's a classic. I mean, that right there is like not too many people can say they got a classic. And I think so, didn't no ID produce the uh record where common disc cube. Uh yeah, and, and um and also uh and that's the classic people, battle record. I mean, he he did four four four, right? I know he did um DOA uh, De- Death of Auto Tune. He did I mean, that he, record. He, I mean, he he did one whole album for uh, for Jay Z. So I mean, yeah, he get props for that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, solid choice. Twenty second pick goes to Trilla Noise tracks. Who you got for me? <clears throat> DJ Mugs. Oh man! Oh man! Come on, dog. Don't <laughs> say who y'all fucking with, man. DJ Muggs. I mean, and like I said before, keep in mind, if I was just an MC and I was to pick producers to do my album, all these are the ones that would that make it like well-rounded. I mean, come on, DJ Muggs from the West Coast. I mean, come on, dog. Cypress Hill first album, second album, third album, fourth album, or whatever. I mean, DJ Muggs. House of Pain too, right? Yeah, House of Pain too, yeah. Yeah. DJ Muggs. I mean, come on, man. Like, I mean, that right there. Especially, I mean, what makes that more special is being from the West Coast, which, I mean, we all know that everything was influenced by the East Coast, you know, back in them days. Mm. But at the same time, to pull that off to where nobody, you know what I mean? I mean, you remember House of Pain's first, I mean, uh, no, I mean, um, uh, damn. The group that he was in. Which one? Soul Assassins? No, 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 no. Damn. I, Costa I Nostra? Know. Costa Nostra? No, man. The, the main group he was in. He was originally part of the syndicate with Ice-T, right? I mean, yeah, that too, but um, I'm talking about the one with Be Real. Cypress Hill? Yeah, Cypress Hill, man. I, hey, my mind is gone. But anyway, <laughs> you, you remember uh, Cypress Hill did their first video in New York, and everybody thought Cypress Hill was from New York. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, f- from the production. Hey, and, that and shit then, was popping over on the East Coast. Exactly. I mean, they blew up on the East Coast. Like, I mean, like DJ Muggs. I mean, all these cats from the West Coast. I mean, just imagine how hard that was back then. Like, I mean, you know, back then, we didn't accept no West Coast stuff. <laughs> but, you know, when, when uh, Cypress Hill came around, like, you know what I'm saying? They, they shot their first video in New York, so we just automatically assumed it was East Coast. So, I mean, but, yeah, but DJ Muggs, that's my pick. Yeah. All right. So 23rd pick in the top 25 produce hip boom bat producer draft goes to Mr. J. Who you got for me? I mean, I'm trying to remember another name. And Chris uh Potterfield said DJ Muggs is originally from Queens, New York. But I think I will go with Go with Black Milk. Man, he was on my list. 
course, you know, he uh, worked with Slum Village. Uh, you know, works with the Cannabis, Caramont, Terrizza. Mm-hmm. Well, I. All right, so we got two more picks. We, um, Trill just texted me. I guess he got the – we got to kind of speed this up a little bit. He said his shit about to die. So we got two more picks. Let me get into this, <laughs> my pick. Well, see, I might I'm as well go say with, it out loud. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Yo, this is the real podcast, man. We don't show the shit. All right, so I'm going with Lord Finesse. I'm going with Lord Finesse. Man, dog. I'm going with Lil Finesse. I don't think I got to say... Let me go Finesse ahead and scratch is. that out. Another D-I-T-C cat. I was know. saving that. I was saving that one. Um, His album, the original album, birthed the D-I-T-C movement. You know. um, Yeah, man. Lil Finesse, man. 24th pick. Yeah, definitely. And uh, uh, Sound of the Police by KRS-One, he did that. And that's one of my oh, all-time well, favorite yeah. tracks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Lil Finesse did that one. Yep, one of my all-time favorite tracks, man. Sound of the Police. I'm not going to let me That's... tag Lil Finesse? I guess not. It hits hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so last pick of the draft, that goes to the person at the first pick, which was you, Trill. Who you got for me? Uh, you know, I, I wasn't going to go for this uh, lesser-known producer, you know, from a little small town down in North Carolina, you know, but uh, – so I had to leave myself out of this, but I'm gonna go with knots. <laughs> Not knots. Okay. Come on, dog. A lot of people. And there was a lot of. I think he's on my list, and a lot of people. We were talking about the other day. They, a lot of people were talking about knots. Knots. N o t z z. N o t t t z. Right. Yeah. N o t t z. Knots. I mean, you know, he he be posting a lot of funny videos now on Instagram and TikTok and stuff like that. But yeah, knots, man. I mean. Extinction level event, man. Come on, dog. Bust around. Yeah. Dog. Matter of fact, That's I think crazy. he is. matter of fact, I think he's from VA, yeah. right? Yeah, he's from VA. I think yeah, so. he's from VA. Yeah. Man, not. I mean, I'm trying to tell you, dog. That right there is like to me, I, th- I think he was the last of the boom bap era. Like the to me, like the real boom bap era of producers. You know, that album right there. Like, man, knots, man, knots is dope. Like dope, dope. Yep. And like yeah, I said, you know, up. that's the top 25 right there. At least, I mean, and to be honest with you, I we probably there's probably some people that probably we could have picked on this list that probably should have went higher. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, but we I mean, this is the list though, as it goes. I and mean, we've got Premier One, Showbiz Two, Havoc Three, Marley Mar four, Pete Rock five, Alchemist six, Easy Mo B seven. J Dilla A, Diamond D nine. Happy birthday to you, Diamond D. Uh, Rick Rubin ten. Um, that's the top ten right there. Static Selector eleven. RZA twelve. Eric Sermon, uh, thirteen. Fourteen. Derringer fifteen. High Tech sixteen. Q Tip seventeen. Jake one. Uh, eighteen. Nick Wiz nineteen. Large Professor twenty. Mister Green twenty one. Um, No ID. Uh, then we got what is it? I can't see the rest of this. Hold up. We got what twenty one no ID, twenty two DJ Mugs, twenty three Black Milk, twenty four Lord Finesse, and twenty five Knots. I mean, if you got I mean, all those but, guys, you got the selection of all those guys to produce your shit. You should be good to go, yo. You going diamond? I, I mean, mention, look, look. Right, honorable mention, Knife Wonder. And that's the thing. I wanted to pick ninth. I almost feel like it's blasted for me that we didn't pick ninth. Nah, nope, nope. I don't but, think it's blasphemy. But we can't but, be I mean, we can't be biased, all right? We can't be biased, right? Just because he's no, 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 no. I'm not hating on him, no. Nah, trust me at all. But what I'm saying is, like, you know, what I'm saying as far as me, I think I'm the oldest one on here. So you are. I mean, I mean, yeah. See, there you go, bro. <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I'm, saying? <laughs> I'm turning 45. This. this I, I'm what? just saying. You know, I, I ain't say you know what. I, I never days. said you was the whitest one on here, but you know, yeah, I'm the I oldest am. one on here. I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but but anyway, you know what I mean. Like, I'm actually crack. I'm actually cracker coated, but let's that's another conversation. <laughs> but my, my thing is, you know, what I mean, that right there shows that you know, what I'm saying we need to do a part two. And what I want to say is that 
ain't none of these in no particular order. I mean, to me, the, the only ones I had in a, uh, in a particular order were Primo and Molly Mall. But everything else after that was just, you know what I mean? Like, it's a draft. So, I mean, j- just like the NBA or the NFL, I mean, I- I'm going to try to pick the, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to pick this person before you. And then later on, like, you ever watch a draft, like, oh, such and such got uh, drafted by the such and such. Then the next day, <laughs> they on a whole other team. So, you know, like, I mean, th- this is a draft. Like, in-, in no way, shape, or form is this like, like me putting that person at the bottom or this person at the top or the middle and stuff like that. So, so with that being said, that means we need to do a part two to this. So what, say, 25, we, like, tw- like uh, 25 I mean, to 50. I mean, yeah, we, we need to do a part two to this. And, and then, you know what I'm saying? We, we can go into the top 25 trap producers because, you know, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. We're going to do mean, all that. I mean, can you brought Rappers, it, I mean, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, groups so. do we could do duos, we could do trios. Yeah, but we might if we're gonna have just three of us, we might need to short it up like uh, maybe twenty top twenty. I mean, yeah, it could be less than that though, really though. So we can talk more between it. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah. Well, we expected one more guest tonight, but he didn't show up. I'm not gonna say no names, but. Nah, so, go ahead. You don't know say you shouted out my text. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn. Mr. You know Jones, I'm disappointed <laughs> in you, man. You didn't show Mr. up Jones. for the top 25 boom bad producer draft when you told me you would, man. I'm sorry. I'm disappointed See? in you. I got to call you out <laughs> right now. Yeah. This guy. You know what One saying? of the original <laughs> members of Alpha Vietnam. And you told me he was coming <laughs> on, and you. <laughs> you stood me up like a. Oh, like one God. of those dicks would if I was to meet him for a date. <laughs> Mm. Anyways, anything I want to talk <laughs> shout out before we go though. Nothing. Shout out to me. Shout out to us. Shout out to a lot of Fed now. And um, shout out to my son. Shout out to my daughter. You know, what I'm saying they both doing time. You know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> other than yeah. that, you know what I mean. Hey, let's get it. Mr. My J, list. Hey, you shout out. My list was better though. Your list was better. Yeah, we talk. We we'll, we we'll argue about that later. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to everybody on on the on the pod. You know what I'm saying? Of course, on the ground experience, we still going strong. So getting ready to try to wrap this up. Uh, shout out to BTS. I'm, I'm working on a uh, track with them. I'll be starting to work on tracks with different folks. Um, and uh, you know. Trying to finish up these last interviews, uh, hopefully lining up some other shows and things like that. You know, uh, got some more interviews coming up. Uh, shout out to GS LSOP. Um, I'll be on their podcast. Uh, hopefully, scheduled Monday, uh, Monday around between seven and eight. So everybody check that out. I'll be starting to put up some flyers and things like that. So. Let everybody know what's going on. That's what's up. And shouts out to everybody tuning in. We had some people tuning in on the Indie Castle Twitter. So we and the Paul Masson Twitter. So we're gonna start running these Twitters a lot more. Fortunately, Twitter doesn't let the comments, you know, come in and whatnot. So but um yeah, that's it. Anything else I want to say before we go? No, nah, man. Peace. Whatever you're doing, uh, keep doing shout it. Out the, uh, Frank, um, 48 Rock, tune in last minute, 910, man. Appreciate you, man. Uh, what you, Fayetteville State University, that's what's up. FSU. Tell your friends. Tell them to check out the pod. The Merc. Appreciate you. And you know what? Before we go, though, uh, hold up. Christopher Porterfield, good show, fellas. Thank you, Chris, for tuning in pretty much the whole show and commenting the whole show, man. Hope you enjoyed Word. Peace. Peace. Beats, beats by trail straight killer vill, dog, 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 dog.